Hello everyone and welcome to Mod Testing for the Colonization Series Part 2. In this episode we have a lot more mods involved. So let's go to VAB quickly and see what's there. I've added Infernal Robotics, KAS and KIS. They've all been updated. Uh, we'll see how well they work. It seems to be alright. Um, I have dumped one mod that used to be very critical to me but just seems to be creating a lot of problems and that's procedural parts. I would really like to use procedural parts, it makes all the craft look a lot better, but right now it's causing tremendous lag on, on loading the launch pad scene, and there have also been other problems reported with it, and so until it gets fixed I think it's safer not to use it. Uh, in order to get the, the rockets looking the way I like to make them, I have decided to use SSTU and also the Tentaras pack. So hopefully that will give me some flexibility to make rockets properly and to make them look nice. So for instance we have the flexible fuel tanks from the SSTU labs pack so this is one of them. I, I, I don't understand the way the flag goes transparent. I'll just remove the flag for now. So here's the tank and so like the procedural parts tank you can resize it to your needs and change the textures. It, it comes with a more limited set of textures and I don't think there are any texture expansion packs for it yet so yeah but it's it's an okay selection so that's a good place to start now uh, one downside of the SS2 pack is it's got a lot of other stuff that maybe I don't need but a uh, handy thing is if I do tend to, if I do want to use these engines from it and these aren't configured for realism overhaul, they're liquid fuel and oxidizer, they're really powerful in some cases. In some cases they use liquid hydrogen, which is part of the colonization pack as well. So that might be handy, that might be excessive, I don't know. But the one good thing about using these engines, if I choose to do so, is that you can make uh, multi-part versions of them without having more parts, right? Uh, so I mean, multi engine versions of them without using more parts. So you can have three engines on the on a single part and that will ensure good performance. Not that we have to worry too much about that anymore I think because 1.1 and all of that but it could be helpful. I have deleted some of the engines that were using Aerozine in N204 which is not proper. Unfortunately it still shows Aerozine as a choice and I'll get to that in a bit. There is a bug I've already seen. Now what I want to do for this uh, video is actually to build a space station and in doing so I want to test out the colonization parts. Now you remember from the previous episode I had a bug, uh, a camera bug. I think that's from a singular part, a specific part possibly in the colonization pack, maybe not. But um, uh, so we'll, we'll build a station one part at a time kind of thing instead of uh, trying to toss up a huge, huge segment. Um, I do have a full mod list in the video description, so you see a lot of parts here. And in fact, uh, SSTU comes even with a space shuttle body, so we have that. Um, though that transparency thing really irritates me, but we can have the space shuttle Atlantis, for instance. Uh, Discovery, Endeavor, Kerbal States, uh, and so forth. You can take your pick. Um, oh, Enterprise from the Soviet Union. That's confusing. Okay, uh, I don't think I'll use this right now. This could take an episode all on its own testing out the shuttle. So I'll set that aside. What we really want to do is build a quick space station. Now for the real colonization series, I've decided that given that I have so many parts, I think I'll just do career mode so that I can get acquainted with all these parts in detail. I mean, we've got Tentaris parts even, all the SSTU parts. Where's Tentaris? Uh, these are Tentaris parts. So, I mean, there's a lot for me to get used to using. And maybe I'll uh, benefit from using them in career mode. Just normal mode so we can get through it a little bit quicker. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the pr a Pioneer module for the space station. Okay, so now we will uh, test out the SSTU tanks. Now SSTU Labs is uh, 
an add-on in development. So we do not want to use SS2 parts for anything permanent. We want them to be one mission objects that will get retrieved because otherwise they'll change. So we don't want them to be uh, part of any permanent vehicle in our system, which is fine because we've got the planetary base ink parts and the colonization parts that are really meant to be our permanent structures on other planets. Yeah, so uh, that's that's the plan. Now the neat thing about the SS2 pack is that you don't need to create another part. You know, with procedural parts, you needed a separate part for the bottom of this. Uh, here, I can just change the bottom mount, and it's got a lot of choices: nose cones, uh, and of course, it's got the same choices for the top. I mean, really, a lot of choices, and then these mounts for the engines. And then uh, maybe a simple mount like that will be what I want. Okay, then I'm gonna tuck these engines in so they look a little bit better. That looks good, doesn't it? I think that looks good. Okay. Okay, I've got uh, four of these guys here, the thud engines, in order to provide more vectoring thrust so that we don't lose control. They've got 12 degrees of gimbal now. So that's excellent, but let's tuck them in a little bit because we don't need them poking out. We do not want Kerbals in just yet, that's fine. Okay. There's a little bit of a staging error there, I'll fix it. So if you want to suggest any other mods that I should add, now's the time. Um, 5.6 gigabytes of RAM I'm using right now. My system has a total of 16. I'd say I'd be comfortable using up to 9 uh, for KSP because I also have to leave some for the system and for recording, don't forget. Um, so yeah, uh, plenty of room for other things. It's not like we're using Realism Overhaul here. Now, uh, hold on, have I... I forget if I've... I think I've changed the UI. So this is 1.1.1 now, and in 1.1.1 you have these flight UI elements, so I've sized them, so now the the nav ball is not as big as it used to be. So that's good, and I've also shrunk these. Now, I mentioned that there is one bug, and I think it's associated with SSTU. You'll notice when I try and hover over resources, it's not highlighting these. It's only highlighting the NTO. And then there's the oxidizer. It, it highlights the oxidizer just fine. But as far as these others, it really doesn't like highlighting them. And if I click stage view, they'll all disappear. Um, I, uh, Since it's sort of ending up on NTO and not highlighting that one, I suspect it's a bug with SS2 Labs and the way it's added Aerozine and N204 into the mix here, which I would rather it didn't anyway. Uh, so yeah. That's just an observation. I'll, I mean, I, I rarely ever try and isolate things by resources, so I'm just going to call that, you know, uh, that's fine. I'm not going to bother with it. I hope it gets fixed, though. Okay. Smart ESS active. Now we do have Ferramero Space. We have Delhi Reentry now because I wanted the G-Force thing. Delhi Reentry doesn't do heat much anymore because it's just a stock heating. But uh, it does have the G-Force limits for the crew. So we do have that. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh. That's funny, even with the thrust vectoring, it didn't, wasn't able to hold it. Oh, I think uh, we need struts in the, on the payload. Maybe we need struts on the payload. That's unusual, because we've got the 2.5 meter docking port attached to the... De, uh, to the oh, we don't have a decoupler, actually. We, it's attached directly to the fairing. I don't think we need a decoupler with the docking port there. We could just say undock, but... Uh, see, I mean, we could enable staging, and it's a decoupler all on its own, I think. But it was wiggling about quite a lot, wasn't it? I wonder why. I mean, uh, these should be pretty... It, this looks pretty stable, doesn't it? Hmm. 
Well, uh, let's add struts. I don't know. Don't see why I need to add struts either. Okay, here we go again. Oh, now the ablative shielding. Oh, wait. Why isn't it going up? Those are producing. Yeah, it's got the right power. The clamps have released. It seems to be off the ground. I was about to note that the blade of shielding moved to the bottom of this. Okay. It's like the clamps never released. Isn't it? I can't click on them, so they are not attached to the vehicle anymore. Hmm. I, I was not thinking we would get uh, bugs so quickly. Well, let's try that again. Throttle up, SAS on. Nope, okay. Revert to vehicle assembly. Something to do, I mean, I, I, all I did was add struts. And then shift the staging around to make it better. That's peculiar. Okay, uh, I've lifted it up a little. Let me try again. And then I'll take off the struts, I guess. It's the only other thing to do. Let's try it again. Nope, that's a uh, pretty darn focus. Max acceleration is 1.4 Gs. So it's not that. Uh, let me let me fix the struts, I guess. Is this new for 1.1.1? 1.1.1 has super struts. Let's say I remove the struts. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove the struts and put the fairing back on. In a world where we have all sorts of weird bugs. Look at that! So, the struts. Adding struts to the payload prevented the rocket from going up. I will, uh, I'll, I'll let you ponder that. <laughs> Uh, I'll, li I'll leave you to ponder that. So we can't do struts. Hmm. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll manually control the rocket then. Because it looks like Smarty SS was not very good at controlling the rocket last time. Something about the payload wiggling or something, I don't know. We do have a lot of... Uh, Acceleration. We have a lot of acceleration. Maybe I could have just uh, reduced the acceleration and it would have been alright for Smart ASS. Okay, separation. Separation. Okay, and ignition. Ooh! That was lively. Okay, why have we decided to flip now? We're at 30 kilometers already. Surely this is not the time to flip. Wow. This one's a little bit tough to handle. Hmm. Alright. Now it's okay. Nice plume. Okay, uh, separating the fairings. I don't know. It felt like this was wiggling about, but I can't imagine how. Now, one downside to them putting the icons vertically like this is that MechJeb doesn't have much room. You can see MechJeb is all, you know, overlapping with that. Don't know if that's good or not. We'll just go for a 100 kilometer orbit. Now, uh, whatever station I create here is not going to be used for the main series. This is just testing the components, right? Uh, no camera problem here, obviously. Okay, that's not a great orbit. I'm gonna leave this stage attached to it so that it can help with the rendezvous for the next part. We've got an inclination too that we should flatten out. But let's launch something else. Let's uh, get this stuff done quickly. See how quick I can do it. Okay, here we are with a Kerbitat launch and let us target the other module. No, no, the other module. 
set as target. And I have my old MechJab configurations in here. So let us get the rendezvous window up. Very good. Close that. And okay, that's good enough. All right, throttle up, SAS on, no struts involved. I can't use Smart ASS because it has trouble controlling this, so launch. Again, I could probably throttle down and then maybe, maybe Smart ASS could handle it, but for now I'll just do it. There aren't too many parts with this rocket, so it is going real time. That's nice, but uh, we're far from having, you know, hundreds of parts. So I think there's just 33 or so. Now I do have Kerbal Joint Reinforcements, so technically I shouldn't need struts, per se. Let's hot stage. Or semi-hot stage. Like that. So you see, I mounted it on the 1.25 meter docking port, so that's why we might be having trouble. Okay, we've got a good apoapsis. Periapsis is almost there, uh, but not quite. Let me let me do some jumping back and forth between vessels. I want to see whether the other part decouples from that stage or not. Okay, right. Yeah, I don't think we need this stage anymore. So let's uh, decouple node and let's check RCS out. Very good. Seems to be all right. We have power. We have plenty of mob propellants. That's just hanging out, so we should dispose of that somehow eventually. But we'll wait till later for that. Now let's hop back to the other portion. I know FMRS is apparently updated, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that. Flight manager for recoverable stages. It would be good. I mean, that was essential to the initial. to the start of the previous colonization series, the initial way I used to try and recover boosters. But I have grown to like stage recovery better. I don't know if stage recovery has been updated, though. Um, if somebody knows, please tell me. No, we'll just stay in uh, outright lower orbit. We'll just stay in the lower orbits to catch up. Here I put a reaction wheel. I do not have connected living spaces, I think. I didn't put that one in. So it should be alright to have the reaction wheel there. I should just put a controller on these stages so I can deorbit them. I'll do that for the next one. Okay, we are now within render distance of the first module. I took care of all the rendezvous burns without bothering to record that. Alright, so let's get rid of the stage and then we'll use RCS for the remainder of the... Well, uh, let's kill Velocity first, now that we're here before we get rid of this stage. So, so far so good on the camera. I did delete um, whole camera VDS. That's one thing I did. I don't know if it was causing problem. I didn't use any whole camera VDS parts, so that would be a little bit weird if it was. Okay, let's dispense with the stage. Oops, a little bit jittery there. Okay. Again, not many parts involved so far. We'll try and get to the point where there are a lot of parts and then dock a shuttle to it. We will have a lot of parts and then dock a shuttle to it and see how it performs. I want to make this a pretty darn big station. I might not finish with the station in this episode, obviously, so I'll follow up with another episode where we continue to check things out. I do have Navy Fish's docking port alignment indicator installed, but that's mainly for if I'm docking from the in-cockpit view. 
like if I'm using the shuttle. There we go, we're all connected. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What the? Oh. Hmm. And, and, wait. Okay. Uh, it's clearly the camera. Okay, so I changed the view. Ooh, orbital camera looks like this. Chase view. Like this. Lock view. Somebody suggested I should try. It's when we connect two of the modules together. Ooh, pre-camera. I can't move the camera, by the way. So I can't move the camera right now. Hold on, let me... Oh, I can't activate SAS. Oh, well, well, it doesn't say I've activated SAS. Um, here. I can't click. Uh, the UI is completely bugged out right now. Pressing C doesn't do anything. This is chase. Locked. Auto. Space Center. So let me go to Space Center and then go to the Tracking Station View. So um, <laughs> it looks like we have a problem. We continue to have a problem. We will take an inventory of the parts, but it very, very, very much looks like the colonization parts are at work here. So I'll take a look at the configuration of those parts to see what they do to the camera, if anything. Uh, but maybe we should quickly launch some other station and dock two parts together to verify that it's not like the docking port. Maybe it's Navy Fish's docking port alignment indicator. I don't know. I mean, you have to try everything, right? So, ooh, it's actually on a suborbital trajectory now. If that's not right. It was definitely an orbital trajectory. I do not have hyper edits. Uh, <laughs> that's not going on here. So something put it into a suborbital trajectory accidentally. So it, it, that that view where it was going down was not well. That's still weird. Anyway, let's see what happens when I jump to it now. Good thing there are no kerbals on board. Okay, so now I can look at it. Now I can look at it, but we're suborbital, so um. Let's point up and just go like that. Somehow our entire orbit shifted. But there's no camera problem now. It was only when we docked. Oh, our periapsis is going down because of drag now. Uh, this is not going to survive. And we can't go to Space Center. Uh, let me leave anyway. It was better off a minute and 43 seconds ago anyway. I decided that I'm going to try using the Tentaris parts, but in doing so I discovered a problem that might render this impossible to use in career mode. You'll notice 120 credits here. Uh, that's not right, and taking a look at the crew block that I'm using costs zero. If I take this off, you notice a negative cost. Negative 880. And of course uh, the situation gets worse whenever I take any other part off. But uh, yeah, so it's got a negative cost. <laughs> uh, that's never good. Uh, now I can probably solve that by adding some supplies. That would be that would be a plus. I guess I'll do that for now. But yeah, clearly I'll have to watch out for stuff like that if I'm gonna do career mode with the colonization series, right? Negative costs always a problem. I don't know why it happens, but. Okay, uh, but uh, let me put some solar panels on this and then we'll be ready to go and we'll try and create a Tentara station and we'll see. I'm going to keep the docking port arrangement the same, so one 1.25 meter part and then one 2.5 meter part on each of the two modules. And then we'll see whether we have the same problem or not. Basically, uh, uh, well, uh, about the same amount of mop balance. I mean, so no major changes except, uh, I don't know, this might be a little bit heavier. No, it's lighter. Okay, I thought with all the supplies it'd be heavier, but I guess not. Okay, so solar panels and then we'll be on our way. Looks like it's a nighttime launch. Throttle up, SAS on. The launcher is the same except I've added a controller and a battery there so we can deorbit it. Not that this save is actually meant to be permanent in any way, but uh, still got the problem with trying to highlight stuff not working, except for after the NTO. All right, here we go. It's 
stage. Stage. Okay, lots of sounds there. Bearings. Seems to be an additional sound each time. There's a sound I expect and then a sound I don't expect. Okay, coasting. I didn't. I, I assume this has a command module in it. Yeah, otherwise MechJeb wouldn't have shown up, so it's fine. Okay, that's nice and high. Let's separate the couple node. And let's deorbit this portion while we can. All right. D. Well, where is the thing? There it is. Okay, deorbiting. Okay, I think it's safe to say that that's not going to survive. Back to Space Center. And we'll launch another portion. Okay, so here's a second module, and I have to emphasize that every with every launch so far, a docking port has been the root part. Okay, so, and I've kept it consistent uh, for the other station. The first root part was a 1.25 meter docking port, and then the second root part was a 2.5 meter. So again, here with this Tantara station, I'm doing the same thing, and trying to keep that consistent as well. So we will find out how that works out. And there we go. We're ready for the next launch. Let's see how this launch and docking works out. By the way, we're currently running at 6.1 gigabytes of RAM, 6.2 gigabytes of RAM. So it's increased somewhat. We're not really doing anything too complicated though, no huge parts. Oh, uh, the controller is reversed. Well, I guess I'll control from here for now. Okay, throttle up, SAS on. Interesting that the control is reversed. I thought we... Uh, the root part's this. Shouldn't be. Oh, I'll, I'll control from... Well, I'll control from this one. It'll be easier to keep it balanced if we control from there. Okay. Alright, here we go. Okay, off it goes. Confused sound effects. Okay, fairings. Okay, well, we've ended it up with a really weird trajectory, but alright, let's get on with it. Okay, we are now approaching render range. We are in render range. So. Once we get to our closest approach distance, I'll kill the relative velocity, and then we'll proceed for the moment of truth. Okay, close enough. Separating, decoupling, whoops, decoupling node. Oop, RCS firing all over the place, point to target. This portion can go retrograde and get itself away okay that's weird I'm right clicking on this docking port senior and it's not letting me control from here or this one I'm clearly controlling from this vessel because I've got the resources listed okay we are now headed for that docking port let me jump back here I still have no control over this. Oh, it says not enough crew. Okay, okay, so that's why. So apparently this command module needs crew. Okay, so that's that's nominal. That's okay. That's not a problem. Okay. So now I know that. This one doesn't. This is a cargo and control block. So no problems there. Okay, we have connection. Oh, I zoomed inside of it myself. Uh, no apparent control problems. Our orbit is not going crazy. Now, this is hardly a, 
Um, what you call it? Uh, a solid test of it. Yeah, I wouldn't say that this is conclusive. But it is suggestive. I mean, um, it is just one test, one sample, and anybody would tell you that that's hardly a sample size worth speaking of. But I would say that there is... Uh, if I was going to look to where the problem lies, it's probably with the colonization modules. So I'm going to take a look at that, and hopefully for the next episode I'll have that nailed down. I guess this is our, the start of our uh, space station now. So hopefully we'll add the colonization modules to it. But uh, So next time I will build on this, and we'll see if I can get a solution to that problem, alright? So on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.